This Week on Machinery PTV, clean, painted, and well cared for, describes this antique equipment, a John Deere corn binder is one of the highlights. Pete looks at the growing demand for used loader tractors, and tractors of a certain age just keep rising in value. Your machinery is a serious investment, and at the heart of every farming operation. Some call it a passion. We're Machinery Pete TV, and today we'll cover everything from auction roundups to the classics to the latest trends and technology. Machinery Pete, the most trusted name in farm equipment. Machinery Pete thanks these premier sponsors for their support. Sullivan Auctioneers, let our team of professionals show you how to make your auction a success. Visit SullivanAuctioneers.com. Hey folks, welcome to Machinery Pete TV. This week we're in Granville, Iowa. We're here for the farm estate auction for Vernon Newen House. Now folks, I've done eight seasons of Machinery Pete TV, 13 seasons of TV total. You're gonna see today, I think my favorite all-time interview with Vion Newenhouse talking about Vernon and the family and how Vernon loved to farm. And we're gonna feature uh, Vernon's vintage farm equipment on today's show, so I think you're really gonna enjoy it. But first, we gotta go back to the studio, catch up on the latest farm machinery news. Thanks, Pete. I'm Clinton Griffiths. USCA rolling out its latest production estimates this week as harvest races toward an end, sparking a run-up in grain prices. USDA now calling for a drop in yield and overall production for both corn and soybeans. The big news here, corn exports raised 325 million bushels to over 2.6 billion. Now, if that happens, that would be a new record high, and that news sent corn soaring double digits on Tuesday. The really big story from the report is in ending stocks. Look at these numbers with corn stocks much lower than trade estimates. Corn in at 1.7 billion bushels, soybeans at just 190 million bushels. If that happens, soybean ending stocks would be at the lowest level in the past seven years. And we're also keeping an eye on the shift in Washington. China signaling it may want to renegotiate that phase one trade deal. The South China Morning Post reporting that China views the trade one agreement as twisted in Washington's favor and reports advisors expect China to pursue renegotiating the deal with a Biden administration. Reuters also saying a Biden administration is seen as unlikely to roll back tariffs on imported steel and aluminum along with Chinese and European goods. That's it for news. Now let's check on some recent prices from around the country. All right, folks, this fun episode continues here with vintage equipment, just beautiful, here with Kelly Newenhouse. Kelly, this John, your 33 spreader, your dad bought this new? Yeah, he bought it brand new in the mid 60s. Um, there's a lot of stories behind this. So we, Such as? Yeah, we filled it a lot of times by hand. Um, that was our thing. We, we did have livestock of our own as kids, okay. and, and also dad had two to 300 head of cattle all the time and that many hogs. So we hauled a lot of manure, but the days we spent hauling manure was, we loaded this with pitchforks for a lot of years. And, yep. and uh, the one story I always tell people is when we got done after a day of hauling manure, we had to power wash this out and we had to soak it down. Dad had a sp hand sprayer full of diesel fuel and waste oil and we had to soak it down to keep it from corroding. And that's the original floor in this spreader. I don't see, I don't know I've ever seen a 33 that original. I mean, you're talking 50 plus years old and it looks yeah. like that. Yeah. Oh. There's yeah. a lot of interest in this. People might buy it just to pull in a parade. <laughs> Absolutely. Head 2100, 20, 22 internet, out three. Head 2044, internet's out. 
tell the story of uh, Vernon and his love for farming. He embraced that change of bigger machinery. Oh yeah, but he he wasn't good with the computer stuff. Technology stuff. He didn't want that in there. I'll leave it, they got the boys here. He bought the combine and it had a glow bar and stuff and he called the John Deere shop, told him to come get it. <laughs> it wasn't going to get used. <laughs> and then we moved to a Mormon farm and the that 240. was 240. Okay. But we didn't have, we always tell the story, we didn't have running water in our house till we moved here. Till we moved here. The <laughs> house we lived in in Sanborn, you pumped the water into the house and we had an outhouse. And yeah. I was six years old before, if we walked in this house, is that a bathroom? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, that's why dad loved the pump so much. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and I'd say to my mom, he is so tight, he won't let me buy this and that. And she'd get mad at me and she'd say, he is not tight. He is thrifty. And someday you're going to be fine off because yeah. he's going to make sure of that. And boy, that woman was right again. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, we've watched a lot of planters sell on Machinery Pete TV over the years, but not many like this. Uh, we have a John Deere 494 row, and we're here with Kelly Newenhouse. Kelly, you did a Twitter video last week about this planter that almost made me start to cry. Yeah. This was Dad's planter going way back? Yeah, this was the planter he started farming with okay. in 1959. And, uh, you know, this was a check planter. You know, they plant it with the checks. And uh, this one was unique because it had fertilizer and insecticide on it. Okay. So we jokingly said our dad was using precision planting way before his time. There you go. They, when the mechanism would trip, it dropped the seed and the insecticide in the same slot, and the fertilizer would be right off to the side two inches. Wow. And so he was using um, grid sampling back then. So. And you had a memory in your video about a special year 1960 yeah. at this plant? Wow. Yeah, a lot of his neighbors, he was up by the Sanborn area at the time, and he had neighbors tell us that they, they were sure our dad was the first farmer in that area to produce 100 bushel corn or better. And it was with this check planter and uh, side dressing, fertilizer, and insecticide. 200, not 10, 200, not 10, 20, 220, 220, 230, 230, 40, 230, stay with me. 230 and 40, that'll have been the 40, 50. 240, 50 now, 60 now, 60 now, 60. 250 and 60, 250 and 60, anybody else? 60, 250 and 60. Sold it. 250 dollars, number 208. Here are a few more items that sold on today's sale. $1,200, you both out. $230 and $30, $230, you're out that. $230 now, $30 in a minute, I'm out $30. Sold it. Back row, $220. That's who in town. Last call. That's who in the middle. Gonna be the bottom of the one. That's who in the middle. Two hundred. Two hundred. Two hundred. Two hundred. Sold it. One ninety. Fire number two forty one. Number 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 four and a half. Four twenty five. Four fifty. Four and a quarter. Be the number four and a quarter. Be the fifty. Four fifty. Four fifty. Every good season starts with one great deal. Get yours today with Farm Hard Rewards. Going on now at your local certified Firestone Ag Tire Dealer. Your next piece of equipment is on MachineryPete.com. Search equipment from dealerships across the country to find what you're looking for. Only on MachineryPete.com.
just recently here folks I've noticed a strong uptick in buyer demand for good condition used loader tractors just over 100 horsepower. Now here's an example. This is a picture of a 2009 New Holland T6030. Now this sold on a farm auction in far southern Indiana on October 20th, 2020. And it was a 2009 model, 1,359 hours, sold with the 840 TL loader and went for $61,600, which is a record high auction price I've ever seen on a New Holland T6030 with a loader. Now for perspective, let's wind back to the spring of 2020. Now here's a picture of a 2011 model T6030. Now this sold on a May 22nd of 2020 farm auction in Northeast Arkansas. Now this thing only had 314 hours on it, also sold with the 840TL loader, but it went for 57,000 bucks. So again, the one that sold October 20th, Southern Indiana, two years older, over a thousand more hours on it, yet it went for 61.6. Now, 10 days before that, on a consignment auction, October 10th, in far south central Iowa, this 1998 Case IH MX110 with a loader and 7,000 hours on it sold for 38,500 bucks. Now, the thing about this one, folks, that's a really strong price given those hours, 38.5. In fact, I went into our machinerypeat.com auction price data which by the way is free for you now to go check out. Just go to machinerypeat.com and, and have had it. But an MX110 with over 5,000 hours, 38.5 is the highest auction price I've ever seen in the US. In fact, the only MX110 over 5,000 hours I've ever seen sold higher was 13 and a half years ago on a farm auction in Saskatchewan. And that MX110 at the time was only seven years old and had 5,018 hours on it and went for $40,000. Welcome back to Tractor Tales, folks. This week, we're in southern Georgia. And you know, when it comes to these antique classic tractors, whether they need a little work or they've been professionally restored, there's always a story about it. And this week, we're gonna learn about a special John Deere B. The 330 John Deere came from Louisiana. Never, when I bought it, had never been painted and still had the original tires on it. Bought it off an auction down there, and the man had bought it from a farmer about four years before that. And when I went back the next morning to pick it up, I asked him if he had any information about it. And he went inside and brought the bill of sale out when that tractor was sold new. I think the man paid something like $3,200 for the tractor, new equipment, all the equipment to go with it, and traded the uh, Cub foam all with all the equipment in on it, and he had full payments, 600 and something dollars three years and 700 dollars something one year. He drove it 40 years and sold it to the man I bought it off the auction from. I think he said $2,400 what he paid the man for it. Like I said, never been painted, it didn't look good, it didn't have a muffler on it, had too much oil in it, and I never heard it run when I bought it. Brought it home, put me a muffler on it, changed the oil in it, crunk it up, and had a rod in it knocking. So I got to rebuild the motor then. I drove it in two parades without a hood. I put me a sign up on the side of it said, run out of money, needs a sponsor. The boy did the hood from it. It took him about two years to do the hood. Of course, he didn't charge me much. It was re related to me. And so he done it on his off time. So I wasn't complaining about you know, it taking so long. But after I wandered in the parade, so that's what I did. I made me a sign for each side and just said, run out of money, can't fix the hood. I need somebody to sponsor to help me. Go and redo one, you've got to put tires on it. It looks tacky to put a paint job on one with raggedy tires, so it's just one thing will lead to another. And I enjoy doing it, it's just like I said, it's an expensive hobby. Machinery Pete TV, brought to you by Ag Direct. For simple, fast, and flexible equipment financing, ask for Ag Direct. Got equipment to sell privately but tired of scams and hassles? Visit MachineRepeat.com and click Sell Mine. MachineRepeat.com, the simple and secure way to buy and sell equipment online. Hey folks, time for our feature item on the sale today. Something we've never shown before. A John Deere one row corn binder. Kelly Newenhouse. Kelly, dad bought this thing, what, like 10 years ago you said? Yeah, roughly. Um, he found it on an auction. It had been stored inside. And uh, he was like a kid in the candy store when he found that because he walked out of there and he said, 
there's nothing missing it's all there to so. find one like this yeah that that's pretty rare steel wheels yeah uh, and he got a good buy on it too at oh, the time. Did so that make dad happy dad too? Dad loved that part. So now Kelly, when we were walking around this thing last night, you you showed me something that was unbelievable. Why don't you show our audience? Yeah, and I didn't even know about this, but I just thought I'd open this up to see what was in there. And actually, that's an original roll of twine from when this thing was used. And so that twine's probably pushing a hundred years old. Man and it's all there so it's that's pretty classic and again it was sort of the originalness of the unit that that got your dad excited yeah it was all all there every chain every mechanical part um he took it apart bolt by bolt cleaned everything up repainted it and put it back together yeah that was his his passion he loved restoring uh, collecting old equipment now, Kelly, I gotta admit, I've 30 years covering auctions. I've compiled over a million prices. I don't have too many comparables here. Are you are you gonna make a guess for me what this thing's gonna bring? I have no idea. I really don't. You know, but it's it gonna... just depends on if there's collectors here that are interested yeah. in this kind of stuff. And I hope so. Um, you know, it's it's history. A hundred dollar band two. Had a hundred dollar gonna get a bottle of one or two, two when you two, two when you two hundred dollar band three. Had three four. Had three hundred dollar gonna get a bottle of one or four hundred dollar band in red. Had three hundred dollar band a four or five. Had four hundred dollar band a five in red. Had four hundred dollar gonna get a bottle of one or five. Time to get five. Time to get five. Time to get four or five. Had four hundred dollar band a five hundred. Had four hundred dollar gonna get a bottle of one or five hundred dollar band a four or five in red. Bid ten. Had four hundred dollar band a five. Had four. You ought to have that, sir. Four and a half. Now five. Had four and a half dollar gonna get a bottle of one or five. Five hundred dollar bill, four and a half dollar bill, five hundred. Hit four and a half dollar, gonna be the bottom of one of five hundred. Last call. We're gonna move it on down the line. Hit four and a half dollar, gonna be the bottom of one of five hundred. Well, folks, this was not the most expensive feature item we've had in eight seasons of Machinery PTV, but I tell you what. Fun to watch, this beautiful condition John Deere one row corn binder, steel wheels, pull type, sell for $450. Well folks, it was 31 years ago this month, November 1989, that I started compiling auction sale prices. And I just want to thank you all so much for following along all these years, supporting our website, machinerepeat.com, and our TV show. It's been a blast. And also I need to remind you again now that all of our auction sale price data is free for you to view at machinerypeat.com. Almost 750,000 sale prices there updated every day. So there's really no need to guess on what any piece of equipment is worth. Just hop in, you'll see the prices, you'll see the answers. Now part of the fun of having all this data at your fingertips is looking backwards sometimes. There's things we can learn. Now, for example, I got looking recently on an item we featured on the TV show here recently, this 2003 John Deere 8220 tractor, 2,285 hours, sold farm auction, Northwest Iowa, went for 91,750 bucks, very strong price. Now, as I got looking backwards in our machine repeat auction price data, I found almost 15 years ago to the day exactly 97 miles to the west, Another 03 model 8220 with very similar hours, 2,400 hours, brought 79,500 bucks. So think about that, folks. Back then, it was a two-year-old 8220, and it brought 79.5, and we just saw a 17-year-old 8220, similar hours, go for 91,750 bucks. Now that right there is about as vivid an example as I can give you on the rising buyer demand for nice condition, 10 to 20 year old tractors, low a horse in good shape. That's what everybody wants. Hey folks, thanks for joining us this week on Machinery PTV in Granville, Iowa. I tell you, it was an honor to be here for the Farm Estate Auction for Vernon Newen House. And I hope you enjoyed some of this vintage equipment we got to watch sell today. But beyond the equipment, just fun to be here and get to know the Newen House family and a little bit about Vernon's career. And Vernon, rest well. Your family and friends will never forget you. And hey, we'll see you guys back here next week on Machinery Pete TV. Machinery Pete thanks these premier sponsors for their support. Sullivan Auctioneers, let our team of professionals show you how to make your auction a success. Visit SullivanAuctioneers.com.
Your next piece of equipment is on MachineryPete.com. Search equipment from dealerships across the country to find what you're looking for. Only on MachineryPete.com.